Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today in gaming, DICE finally confirmed the reveal date for Battlefield 6. The Gears of War developers shot down a major rumor, we might be getting a new Halo Infinite trailer soon, and much more. Yesterday, it looked like a Battlefield 6 reveal was imminent. A brand notable for working on the franchise's trailers tweeted about two new game trailers dropping this week featuring their music. Some believe that DICE used their music in the leaked trailer audio that's been circulating for the Battlefield 6 reveal trailer. This speculation and tweet sent the entire internet into a frenzy for info about the game. And then it happened. DICE finally confirmed the next Battlefield game will be revealed in June. They tweeted words that rhyme with soon. EA's Director of Communications for FPS and Star Wars games, Andy McNamara, quoted the official Battlefield tweet saying, Boom indeed, see you all in June. EA have since confirmed that EA Play Live is happening after the reveal on July 22nd. The reaction to the announcement was decidedly mixed. Supposed leaker Tom Henderson was outraged and live-streamed himself reacting to the news. In a now-deleted tweet, Tom said on a serious note, if it is June, a few people need firing. Regardless of the leaks, it's a shambles. Tom has repeatedly claimed to be an authority on info about Battlefield 6 and speaks negatively of anyone that refers to his leaks as speculative. As we've said countless times before, leaks are speculation until proven otherwise by official sources. And even if his leaks do come from someone at DICE, there's no guarantee of their accuracy. Things change so quickly in game development and it's clear that if DICE were planning to reveal their next game this month, that plan changed at some point. Everything people assume about the next Battlefield games comes almost entirely from leaks spread by Tom and other anonymous sources. DICE and EA haven't said anything concrete about the game. Announcing the game will be revealed in June is the first time they've given any specific info about Battlefield 6. We don't even know if it's going to be called Battlefield 6 or just Battlefield or something else. All that said, some fans of the franchise have grown frustrated with DICE playing coy about the game. DICE's previous official post about the game promised a reveal soon. Nearly a month has gone by since then. Between then and now, several official Battlefield social media posts have been dedicated to poking fun at the speculation surrounding the game. Overall, it's clear that your best bet is to base your expectations on official information only. As always, we'll cover any official info as it's released while continuing to cover any credible leaks as speculation. For now, you can expect a reveal in June with extended coverage during EA Play Live in July. We might get official teasers or more info between now and then, but EA are clearly saving the big info for June and July. EA have an investor call scheduled for today. If anything significant is revealed, we'll have breaking coverage of it immediately after. Otherwise, look forward to a full recap as part of tomorrow's episode. That said, rumors are buzzing that a full reveal trailer will be leaked today. If that does happen, expect swift coverage from us. Call of Duty Warzone is getting the iconic 80s action film character John Rambo as a brand new operator on the 20th. The game's official Twitter account released a trailer showing Rambo using his iconic bow. John McClane from the Die Hard franchise is also joining Warzone ranks at some point, but there's no teaser trailer for him yet. The Call of Duty franchise has a long history of including celebrities' likenesses, but it's generally limited to NPCs or zombies characters. Yesterday, Gears of War developers, the Coalition, announced that they're sunsetting support for Gears 5 after its final expansion launches this year. They're moving on to development of future games using the Unreal 5 engine. Many believe one of their next projects is a Star Wars game, but the developer quickly put that rumor to rest. The franchise's senior community manager posted on Reddit saying they aren't working on any Star Wars game. The rumor came from Gamesby editor Jeff Grubb suggesting the Coalition might be working on a Star Wars game but even he was unsure about it. 343 are knee-deep in production on the Halo Infinite trailer. Campaign project lead Joseph Staten tweeted an image showing the studio has edited as many as 14 versions of the game's next trailer. The studio says more info will be revealed soon. That could mean this month or next month during Microsoft's E3 presentation. Development updates on Infinite have shown a ton of progress since the game's initial gameplay reveal last year. Unfortunately, that footage was heavily scrutinized due to its lack of polish and the game was subsequently delayed. While that likely had more to do with the pandemic slowing down production than anything else, it's clear that they've made a ton of progress on the game's visuals since then. 
Resident Evil Village has pushed the franchise's total units sold to over 100 million copies. To date, the game has sold more than 3 million copies, and so far it's matched sales of the Resident Evil 2 remake and lags behind the franchise's fastest selling game Resident Evil 6, which sold 4.5 million copies in its first two days. Resident Evil 7 went on to sell 8.5 million copies total, so it's likely Village will do slightly better based on how quickly it's selling. Fans of Grand Theft Auto 3 and Vice City reverse engineered the source code for both games earlier this year. The project was fascinating because it opened the doors for all sorts of original works based on the original games, like total conversions, fan-made expansions, new games, and more. Unfortunately, the excitement was short-lived as the project was DMCA'd by the franchise's publisher and copyright holder Take-Two. They got the project's GitHub and over 200 different forks of it taken down, but a developer of one of those forks has counterclaim Take-Two's DMCA claim. This means GitHub had to restore his specific fork, but it doesn't mean it will stay up forever. Take-Two can now take the matter to court if they want. The forks developer claims that his project doesn't utilize the original developer's code. Think of it like replicating a game from the ground up entirely with original code versus just decrypting the game's files. Other projects, like the Super Mario 64 port, remain online thanks to fair use copyright law, but it's still within the copyright holder's rights to contest the projects in court. NVIDIA Broadcast just got a major update that adds echo removal and video noise reduction filters. This app utilizes NVIDIA's GPUs to run AI-enhanced filters in real time. It provides stuff like background removal, background blurring, and audio noise suppression. The audio filter in particular has been widely praised as the first of its kind that results in something natural sounding. The new filters work quite well based on early reviews. While they're intended to work on RTX GPUs, you might have some luck running them on earlier generation GTX hardware as well. Just expect a bigger performance hit on the GTX GPUs. The PlayStation 5 DualSense controller can now be used on iOS devices with the PlayStation 5 Remote Play. Apple recently added support for next-gen Bluetooth controllers. The latest update for Sony's Remote Play app lets you use the PlayStation 5 controller, but it sounds like support for all its features is limited. The adaptive triggers work, but the haptic feedback is dodgy and not on par with the native experience. The controller's audio inputs and outputs don't work either. A new report from Upload VR makes some bold claims about Sony plans for the PlayStation VR 2 headset. The report claims the headset will use a 4K panel, eye tracking, and haptic feedback. And 4K headsets have been a thing for a while, but it's a massive leap forward from the original PlayStation VR's display. The big news is eye tracking. This gives developers the ability to utilize foveated rendering to improve performance. In a nutshell, the headset keeps track of where your eyes are looking and renders things beyond your field of vision at much lower quality. It's similar to variable rate shading, which does the same thing in traditional 2D games, but without the eye tracking that ensures a high quality presentation. Assuming the report holds true, it would put the PSVR 2 in the upper echelon of premium VR systems. Before we get to our final story today, just a quick reminder that we'll have a breaking coverage of EA's investor call if anything major is revealed. Stay tuned to our Twitter for updates at Level Cap Gaming. Fortnite is getting a PvE sandbox survival mode called Daybreak. The mode has been data mined, and recent court documents in Epic's court battle with Apple confirm the mode is coming soon. The documents describe the mode in a way that sounds similar to games like Rust in Minecraft. It'll feature a day-night cycle with hostile creatures that come out in the dark. Players will gather resources and defend themselves from those creatures while attempting to escape the island via chopper. Players have three in-game days to escape before a storm overtakes the island and kills them. And that wraps it up for today in gaming. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.